Further, the notice of public hearing be held at the Board of Education meeting on September 17, 2015 be published. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, yes. Um, we had the gentleman that came up and, and spoke about you know, engagement with the, the community. Um, I was wondering if uh, our budget is going to be hard copy and it's also going to be online, correct? Sure. Okay. So I'm wondering if if people have any questions, they could submit them online, and we can maybe explain that right at the get go. You know, they could submit their questions, and then when we have our meeting in September, possibly that question could be read here in public and and reviewed, and maybe um, that might be some some discussion, and maybe that would allow for some of the. Um, questions that the community has that we can answer aloud. I, I don't know what, what others think. If I may just provide a little bit of information about that. So uh, we have had a number of um, individuals come to our uh, publicly open uh, budget and finance committee meetings. Uh, we are available before those meetings, after those meetings, uh, to take uh, questions before and after those as well in any venue. So we have uh, been able to answer some some of those questions. That's I don't want to say everyone, uh, but so that has been an avenue where we've been able to approve some questions. Uh, I'll let the board speak in terms of whatever you all would want to do in terms of other uh, possibilities. But certainly, I, I really like the Sam's uh, thoughts process here because it's it's the ultimate in transparency. We can elaborate on one's question that maybe 10 other people are thinking of, and the other 10 that may not have the technical ability to think of, and so on. So there's like a, a cumulative benefit based on one question. So my thoughts are, if we do have a forum that um, people can send in questions, they would compile them, and then they present a summary FAQ at the onset, maybe at the public hearing, that might help um, facilitate more hearing, maybe. It's just a thought. Are we looking to have, if someone submits questions and we give answers, are we looking for two-way dialogue, or are we just looking to answer the questions no. submitted? I'm not looking for two-way dialogue because that's not the purpose of, of the board meeting nor the public hearing. It's, it's basically to get input and for us to discuss it. I'm not looking for the dialogue. But I think this would be an avenue where if somebody has a question, they send it in. Um, and there might be several of the same type of question that could be consolidated into one question, and then we could, could respond to it. And I think that would be a very positive thing. I, I'm comfortable with that. Um, I just think that we need to have a hard stop on state for our questions to give the administration time to get the answers so that people are sufficient with answers. Good point. Um, I think it's tough enough my head, but I think for me, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I think that's a good feedback. My, my experience at village board meetings is usually when we have discussions on budget, it, it usually is a dialogue where you ask questions, you get an immediate response. And if there's further questions, that dialogue opens up. Um, if there isn't an immediate answer, usually it's, it's tabled until an answer could be provided. My experience talking to Mayor Al Larson or, or any of the other municipal boards has always been an, an open dialogue, and, and that's has seemed to work. But that's my personal opinion. That would be the way I would favor the two-way communication. It's hard to argue with that one because they're taxpayers. Well, I the, the limitation is that, and the Illinois School Board Association will also tell us that. School board meetings are exactly for what Anna's I'm sorry, Mrs. Complex spoke to is that it is open to the public but not open dialogue back and forth. I don't think the public does not deserve their answers. It's not a debate, it's a meeting to do the business of the board and the school district. And when you that's where the line where the Illinois School Board says is that's what happens, and then you don't get the business of the board done. So that's where my hesitation is. It's certainly not the questions of the community. So then, okay, so going back to that, that's a very good point. So then, literally, the providing a mechanism for questions to be brought in, establishing a due date, if you will, so that it provides enough time to um, research, provide an answer for the, the layman. And I think that's 
the operative word. And um, so that when the hearing day comes, we're always as clear as we've got plenty of time right now to do that. Everybody. I, I think so, and I think um, you know I would leave it up to the to the superintendent to decide what the deadline should be because he knows what the capabilities are and, and he'll know what the demand is um, on some of the questions, um, and possibly then we can even go a step further um, after our meeting of uh, putting those questions on our website along with you know maybe a reasonable lengthy response you know depending on. on question is and then that answers the question it also allows the community more more information because I think that that's that's important transparency um, as you said is, is very important so I, I'm, I'm thinking we're it allows us for us to have the dialogue um, it allows us to have the input from from the community and then it allows us to share it back with the community what those answers were just to make sure that I'm clear, uh, the suggestion is that we would post an invitation online. Is that? I think we. Yeah, I think we have to create, decide how you want it to look as a board, so that the community can understand. There needs to be some sort of public posting and invite I've got a question that we can't answer. Is it there that there right? I mean, if any questions? The tenant budget has been up there publicly. I mean, you can answer yourself or vote back to the, the staff, and you would direct the staff anyway. We're just looking to consolidate information to make it more public, or this will make sure I understand what those. No, because I, I guess I'm thinking the budget is put online, and there must be some kind of an introductory page to it. I would think. We have the entire report that you have right. there. We have the presentation is up there as well. So when somebody yes. clicks on it, they want to see it. I'm thinking, at least this is what I'm envisioning is okay. Uh, if you with life. If you have any questions in regards, please direct, you know, please list your question and direct it to whomever you decide, and then uh, maybe let them, let them know that that question will be um, answered and brought to the board at our September 13th meeting. Well, wait, I want to know the post of that. So now you're saying that would be a staff function right there. So if also the, the, the staff is doing this budget, if also and I have a question on section 3, 4G, Ask a question, I submit that question, get this thing through. We wouldn't necessarily be answering that question. We might see a compilation of those questions. Okay. That, that, that'd be the better way to And that would, you know, yeah, however it is. Staff, the staff is answering a lot of these questions. The bottom, I mean, a lot of these same questions the board are asking individually. So that's what you start to see part of it. So a compilation might like, hit that same thing. Right, but I, I'm not saying it should be directed to, uh, uh, you know, to, to particular staff. It would go to wherever Dr. Cates. I would Besides the create, questions, create, you know, that'll be up to him, the logistics. Right. We're just asking, you know, do this. He can figure out the logistics. He always does. Yep. He's good at that. Other than summarizing these questions, this is a little different from what goes on on a daily basis related to the budget. Anybody call him any day and ask him any question. Right. And many times they do. Right. I, I just believe that to Mrs. Klimkowitz's point, she just wants to acknowledge that we heard the community and it was something they requested and it seems to be a fair Absolutely. way to, you know, and as a board, and I think, like you said, we do it. So it's just a matter of the logistics. It's the same. Dr. Cates decides to do it and as a board, is this something we're giving him the directive to do? And, and I would say if it works well, it's something we can continue. If it gets overwhelming, then maybe we won't be able to continue it. But unless we give a try, we're not going to know. So just for my clarity, that when questions come in and they get answered by administration, that if there's seven questions, that I can ask the question one way and the rest of us can ask the same question in the same different way, that as long as that question got answered in a way it's okay. We're not answering each and every person's question. Okay, just want to make sure we're clear. All right, I'm good. Anyone? Thank you. Thank you. So we're still discussing the tentative budget, right? Yes, yes. We're not closing that. We're just closing the <laughs> following Mr. Green.
we're just closing that little piece of our discussion on that. Is there any more discussion on the tentative budget? Yeah, I'd like to know how the rest of the board um, feels about directing the administration to plan for a 400,000 surplus and, and contingencies. When we haven't used contingencies traditionally, it seems like the contingencies from previous years would still be available in our fund balance to draw on if we need a contingency. I, I'm not sure why each year we continue to compound our, our contingencies. And, and if everyone would agree with their thoughts on it. I think it's a valid question. We don't use the compound, do we? Well, it goes, if we don't use the contingency from a previous year, it goes into the fund balance or the reserve. And it's still available to us in future years if we needed it. So we add to it each year. Each year we have a contingency, it continues to go into our reserve. So I'm just wondering why we would budget for contingency when we haven't, haven't used it and we still have previous year's contingencies available to us in a, in a fund balance. our levy off of that budget, so we did receive funds for it. Hold on a second. Correct. Your question was, are we compounding the contingency on the budget? We are not. No, we're right. That wasn't my point. My, my question was, we put the contingency into the fund reserve when it's not used, and then each year we continue to add to the fund balance with contingency that is not used. I'm saying that's not correct. Does everybody agree with that? Well, now you've kind of confused me, but if, if we have an amount for contingency but we don't use it, 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 it remains in our reserves then, right? Right. So okay, it's, so it do, it's not every year. Right, it's the same. It's no different than if in line item, you, you know, there's a thousand dollars and then you use small numbers. There's a thousand dollars, and in that particular line item, in one year, you don't use four hundred dollars of it. It's the same concept. You still have to budget off what you may or may not use. It's my understanding on the contingencies are that they're there for in a case of emergency, and in the event that you need to go to them, you do. And historically, our district has not. Right, and and I'm just saying that we have a fund balance that can serve the same purpose as a contingency. Well, can you clarify then for me, Dr. Cates? Because the contingencies are broken up into different fund, different yeah. funds. So if it's just sitting somewhere and we need to use it for a particular area, is that allowed, or don't we have to use monies within each particular fund? Yeah, now we're getting to some complicated <laughs> school finance issues, but in Sorry. general, they are accessible. For those uh, that require transfer, they do come to the board for interfund transfer and for board approval. We can do that, and you can do that as, as the board. So uh, the funds are available. But um, what I would just offer for your consideration is that the uh, amount of the contingencies is small. Now, the, the percentages that we have out of the entire budget and the amount that we have held out is, is a very small portion. Um, and so that amount uh, is just something for unanticipated. And in today's world and with today's uncertainties that are out there, uh, we thought it prudent. Uh, we have been very mindful and protective, and though we haven't used them in the past, there's nothing to say that having a fractional percentage contingency for some unknown or unanticipated expense, that to, to us seems like the prudent stewardship. Right, I, I think my perspective is that why take it from the property taxpayer when we already have plenty in case of an emergency in our fund balance? I, I feel like your perspective is more, if I may, geared towards the levy. Well, the budget is the, the first step to determining the levy. So we ask in the levy for what we need in the budget, and we determine our needs first, 
And I'm just saying if we if we have enough for an emergency in our fund balance, then why do we need the contingency in the budget? We can lower the budget, thus impacting the levy to a lower to, to an extent to lower that. Because I don't think we would want to levy less than what we would need in our budget. Uh, oh, oh. So the, this is another area you know, where school finance is so tricky. You cross over two levy years within a given school budget. So last year we were anticipating the levy was going to be higher than it was. When it was less than that, we actually had an impact on our on our revenue. So the, the string that we were um, you know, anticipating or the numbers we were working from for our projections, they turned out to be different much different, honestly, than we had anticipated it had been three-year averages. So when we cross over two budget years, or two levy years within one budget, it gets loose. And while we do our very best, and we, and we do appreciate you know, the board's patience and, and waiting for us to accrue the, the actuals, to, to actually book them so we know where we're basing our best projections on, that is a, is a best plan. And we work real hard to come in as close as we can. That's why the contingency we, we uh, have been fortunate in, and we've been able to uh, not utilize the contingency, but have a small fraction available. So that double double levy year across the budget, when we don't know what that second half is going to be, that's where it gets right. And, and it just looks traditionally like we we constantly had surplus, so we've either been over budgeting. Or, I mean, even with the reduction in revenue, we're still coming in with good surplus numbers that are much more than what we projected going in, which is great. It's an testament to the administration and to all the staff that they're working very hard not to, um, you know, spend unless they need, but it, it still seems like we can reduce what we're asking for and not just kind of, because we're basically putting in our budget $400,000 surplus, which we're just going to take and put right into the fund balance because we don't have a place to spend it until we get through the contingency. So that four hundred thousand, I'm not sure why we would want to take that out of the community. So I'm, I'm just curious how the rest of the board feels about that. Yeah, I think Return to the community. 
So that's what we have proposed in this budget, and we think that it is uh, a good budget. We think it's the right budget to sustain the educational quality and at the same time return five times the 400000 you know, to return the two, two million. It's my understanding that if we have 252 million, one one percent of that would be 2.5. A tenth of a percent of that would be 250 thousand. So when we're talking about a, a consumer price index of 0.8 um, percent, you know, a, a tenth of a percent is about 250 thousand dollars. So if you're looking at you know the maximum 0.8 uh, percent, you know th that would be eight times 255, uh, like about two million dollars. So if we're looking at $2 million and we want to bring down that uh, CPI ask, and if we can take out 400000 with about two-tenths of a percent or so, and, and then we and that's just the surplus, and then we still have the contingency of at least 900000 on top of that, you're at $1.3 million, you're talking about a half a percent in, in my opinion. As we need. percentage to a taxpayer and so I guess you have that you know that's something from a standpoint is that half percent important to this board or is the overall financial health of the school district and the community as large you know that's that's the way they're talking about it you know or is, you know this budget's big and so we can split hairs and hairs and hairs, or we can look at it as the whole and make sure that the spending is in line with the expenditures, which it appears to be pretty tight, as Dr. Gates has said. Personally, I, I agree with having the contingency, and I agree with you know having it into the into the different expenditures. I, I think that that's. Um, I don't want to say a good way to do business, but I think that that's a sound way to, to, to go forward because I know at times when you have to transfer from one um, 